I've been getting a lot of questions on the new uh, CPA exam implementation for 2024 and how to plan for it, how not to plan for it, what to do, what not to do uh, from many candidates. And so what I wanted to do is take an opportunity to go through the tentative dates that NASBA released. And I think it would be a good little starting point to kind of at least start to put the thinking cap on to determine what you're going to do or not do. So what I'll uh, go forward is, and this is all on the website, so if you actually go through on nasba.org and go to their blog, uh, this was released a few days ago. So what uh, the first paragraph, not tremendously important. I mean, it's just kind of giving you the intro. Second paragraph, I think is important uh, for people that if you pass and retain credit for all four parts of the CPA exam by December 31st, 2023, these new changes in future administration will not impact your journey. So basically, if you're going to be done by December, which ends up being December 15th, as you read down a little further, because of when you cannot test certain sections by, well, I should say cannot test for certain sections. Um, and so we'll get into that. So as you get closer to 2024, um, new information is being uh, avail that is being made available to help candidates plan their testing schedules through 2023 and 2024. The document or the, the, the blog is actually broken up into two subsections. One is for 2023 important dates. So if you go and read it on your own, uh, just to kind of give you a little heads up, and then the 2024 important dates. And then I'll also go into kind of the score release because if you remember in the last um, the, the the last video that I made, uh, they had mentioned that there was going to be some uh, delay in this first quarter, um, and so we'll get into that. Uh, it's actually not as bad as initially uh, expected. Uh, through um, you know, uh, it actually only ends up being a few more weeks than the new normal. I should say the new normal because what's going to end up happening is is there going to be some differences to the way that we've always seen the score releases, and so I think that's important to understand that it's going to come in four waves now, or based on the quarter, um, and that's going to be kind of the new norm. So it's if everybody's in the same circumstance then it doesn't really matter and if uh, you know as many of these changes through the years eventually we'll get used to them and this will be become the new uh, CPA exam as we know it so um, I'll just caveat that a lot still has to be approved uh, by, the, by the AICPA at this point so you know just keep that in mind as we kind of go through this is that uh, there's a lot of you know uh, hey, this is going to still be reviewed or uh, accepted by each one of the states so you got to kind of have that in your, uh, you know, on um, as you're evaluating this, and instead of just kind of jumping in and saying, okay, this is the rule now, it's not the rule. These are kind of still being approved, uh, and I'll I'll note the exceptions when that's not the case. So, if you, uh, as we, uh, let's okay, let's go down to, let's see. So, okay, here we go. So, uh, the uh, nice little uh, intro, right? The NASBA and the AICPA. Uh, are now releasing right tentative application information and testing schedules for late 2023. Okay, if we go into 2023 now, let's just jump right into it. So uh, to me, this is kind of the first uh, wow, right? If you're planning, first candidate should note the last day of testing for all current CPA exam sections, whether it's your uh, audit, BEC, FAR, or REG, is anticipated to be December 15th. So it's funny. So above when they said that you had until the 30th, it really ends up being that the uh, last day of testing should be December 15th, 2023. So basically 2023 ends December 15th uh, for purposes of your credit. Well, excuse me, for purposes of you sitting for the exam. Uh, no CPA will be scheduled from May 16th through January 9th. So that's kind of uh, the old blackout dates where you're not going to be able to schedule anything from the 16th to the January 9th, right? And, that, and they, and they kind of, you know, give you the reasoning to convert uh, the conversion of IT systems uh, for the 2024 CPA exam, all right? See, candidates are encouraged to plan the testing schedules accordingly, right? So, you know, big, big news that you are, um, the last day of testing is December 15th. Once again, I'll box that, right? You know, you got to include that. If you're making excels and doing your plans, which you, uh, I tend to do with all my candidates that I'm working with, you have to plan the exam, look at it as a battle and not a war. There's going to be four, uh, exams that you have to pass. 
you have to look at this and put it in Excel. Uh, take a look. You have score release dates, so you know when you're going to get one and not get one. Then we're going to go over those in a little bit. But the most important part is is that you, you should have a strategy, and especially for those who have you know that are employed, um, you have a big four. I'm uh, you know. <laughs> You got to be ready for busy season. If you're not ready for busy season, and know that you're not going to study as much as if you were uh, not studying. So I, I think you know uh, not working. Excuse me. So I, I think it's important that you have to come up with an exam strategy. And so they realize that. And, and what they're trying to do is trying to give you some insight because many people are asking, right? And in the, in the, in the last release by NASBA. Did, it told you stuff was going to change, never gave you any kind of tentative timeline. I mean, we know by the name of the change 2024 was going to happen in 2024, but we finally get some concrete, when can I stop testing or, uh, and so on and so forth. So in addition, okay, uh, now they're giving you some kind of, so I was expecting this, you're going to see some kind of BEC notices, right, because of the, so in addition, candidates wishing to take BEC in the later part of 2023 need to know right that the NASBA will stop processing authorizations okay uh, to test and notices to schedule on November 15th 2023 okay so basically what they're saying here is right notices or NTSs as we know them okay are not going to be processed uh, after Okay, we'll start processing authorizations to test, right? That's for the new people coming in and, and the notices to sit uh, on November 15th, 2023. Okay, so if you're trying to squeeze into the old BEC exam, November 15th is the last time you can schedule. So you got to plan that accordingly uh, if, if you're trying to figure out, you know, can you squeeze out two exams or, or one exam? Well, there's your answer. You got until November 14th. Uh, so for the people that are listening that I'm working with, uh, we're definitely going to spend some time and talk about that date because we have to kind of get it in before that. Uh, so this will, you know, and, and if you notice, it says that this will necessitate, right, uh, the boards of accountancy from each state, right, final application deadlines. And this, and this is this is really kind of interesting, right, because the, if you if you want to get an NTS, and for those that are retaking the exam, you know that the NTS has kind of come pretty quickly after you've done it the first time. The first one, especially if you're applying new, right, for those of you that are new to the journey, you have to be careful because it takes longer. You should expect it to take longer than you think it's going to take. And so with that being the case, with the new exam coming in, right, they're going to, and I said they still have to do this, the deadlines are yet to be determined and will be published once they become available and shared by each board, right? So each state is going to give you the answer, but they're going to come up with deadlines that say, okay, if you apply to take the exam after this date, you're not going to meet the requirement, right? Because they got to put pressure on themselves now to, you know, people are going to be upset if they are struggling or, 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 or stressing to get the application in just to turn around and find out that they didn't make the November NTS scheduling. And the NTS always takes a little longer on your first time. So just be be cognizant of that, that that's still going to be a come, you know, we'll give an update on the channel once, once we get closer or get any more information on that. But I think it's important to note that, you know, if you're kind of going through this for the first time, uh, I would expect it not to be as as um, easy because we're already in, you know, it's, it's June already, right? So you really only have uh i mean if i'm thinking backwards right so you have all of june july august september october um november 15th so you got to give them a few weeks a month or so to give you the nts so in reality you, you know they're they're kind of closing in on this deadline for new applicants um and so then it says you know conversely um will the each board, right? When they say boards of accountancy, they they plural. They mean the boards in each state. We'll also need to establish an initial application acceptance dates for uh, discipline sections, right? So they also know that conversely, we just talked about the people that are coming in that want to squeeze into the to, to the old exam. What about the people that want to try to get in? to start okay and so they realize that they also need to establish right initial application acceptance for you know these these are the discipline areas right you have your bar I, isc and tcp so uh you know tax and compliance so authorizations to test and notices to schedule the discipline right this is for the discipline um sections will not be processed okay until 
November. So the earliest, okay, that you'll be able to start to schedule. Now, it's interesting because uh, I have this conversation all the time with my candidates is you have to be able, especially going in to busy season, right? Busy season officially starts for many firms uh, January 15th. Um, and then, you know, the ending depends on the client and so on and so forth. But when you're kind of going in to that January 15th, for a lot of firms, it's just, you know, the automatic 55 starts and you have to put in the hours. And so the expectation is January 15th, you're going to have less time to study. So this this date is, is important, especially for busy season, okay, because you have to try to sit or schedule, okay, and these initial acceptance deadlines, okay, so now they're going in, so this is for people that have, you've already been accepted by the board and, and you're kind of, you already have an NTS, so this is when you can, you know, November 22nd is for you to start to to uh, to use that NTS, but if you're new, okay, the initial acceptance dates are, yet, are also yet to be determined and will be published on NASBA's website once they become available and shared by each board of accountancy, right? Once again, each state. So um, another important, once again, this, you know, this is really kind of the, the BEC paragraph uh, for those that are kind of zeroing in on that. Uh, planning is key, especially with a new exam. You, you, you got to have that, you know, in the back of your mind. Are you taking it first? Or if you're trying to squeeze it in last, um, it's uh, good to, you have, I mean, you need the dates. So uh, the tentative dates are definitely good. I would imagine some of these are going to change uh, because they, they made it real clear um, that they're going, that these are tentative uh, unless they've been approved by each state's board. So, uh, you know, the other three, the core uh, or the... <laughs> the three sections, audit, FAR, and reg, because you can't call them core until we get to 2024, uh, the audit, FAR, and reg applications can be continually submitted and processed as the same codes will be used for the core sections that will start 2024, okay? And so they will have some scheduling blackouts, right? So the blackouts are uh, important because that's what's going to be new uh, because of the, uh, you know, they gave that as a warning on the last documentation that they shared that um, there's going to be some blackouts coming due to the implementation of the new exam. So, okay, so that was 2023 dates. Uh, I like the way they did this. It would have been nicer to kind of break it up, I guess, by uh, each candidate's situation, but they broke it up by year. Uh, nonetheless, you kind of have to read the whole document in order to figure out what, what paragraphs apply to you or not. Um, so, uh, what's important is that, you know, for 2024, they published the uh, CPA exam testing schedule and the score release schedule, which I thought was good. Um, and so, I think I have some uh, interesting kind of um, uh, notes or what I've seen from kind of, and once again, uh, I mean, I got a tentative, right? I mean, it's all over the place, tentative. So, w what, I, what I thought was interesting is going forward, right, between let's just say March and April, or excuse me, March and May. So they broke this up into two subsections, right? So you have your discipline, because this is the way the new, the 2024 exam is going to kind of look going forward. You kind of have to change, for those of you that have been testing for a while, right? The, you, now you're going to have, you're going to have your core, okay? And then you're going to have your discipline, right? That's, that, that's your old BEC into the three sections that we talked about before, okay? Over here, uh, let's talk about the core. So they they're going to be different depending on if you're taking the BEC or core. This is going to add a little wrinkle, okay, because in the past, we've always kind of treated all exams for planning the same, and now there's going to be dates depending on if you're taking the BEC. So this, in the beginning, is not that big of a deal if you're just starting out, but if you're looking to, uh, to save credit if you're on the verge of losing credit, this is a big deal. So I think that, you know, it's important to understand that in between the core, uh, the first one is about six weeks from, from uh, te last testing to score report, right? And then it drops, so it's about six over here, and then from over here, it's about five weeks straight down. So, so all the other quarters going back, and, and once again, tentative, tentatively, but five weeks. And then your discipline, your, your, your new BEC, sections um those are almost uh this is the big one eight weeks on your first score report so you got to be careful as i always say if you're waiting for a score and it's an eight week gap what are you doing i mean i kind of like uh eight weeks to be clicking 
in the middle of busy season, to be honest with you, especially where studying is kind of so, you know, good little planning tip uh, that, that we're going to discuss uh, with the people that I work with, because I think if I was, you know, if you have a rough busy season ahead of you, we got to look at the eight weeks and say, maybe we try to take that right before January 15th. Um, you know, so, but look, it opens up on January 10th. So the optimal time, okay, from between January 10th and 15th, that, I mean, those dates are going to sell out. So you, you got to imagine that, you know, planning has got to be done before. You got to know what you're going for. Uh, so this way you're not, uh, you know, that's going to sell out real quick because if anybody, is kind of sitting down with a uh, Excel with a with your dates in front of them. You know that January 10th to 15th is great because that five days really then gives you eight weeks while you know busy season is clicking. So you're gonna have you know your 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 uh, February 15th, March 15th, which for a lot of people that's your big deadline anyway, right? And then you have your you know so at that point you'll be at March 15th. But by the time you find that if you pass or fail, and then you can make a decision: do you want to keep taking? Do you want to try to take BEC again? Or do you want to move on to the core? So I I think this has to be kind of further delved into you know um, because then there's a six week trade off. From that point forward, then it changes from five to four weeks. So it's not a consistent overage, um, but you know that's kind of the um, what I kind of broke up here is just to kind of give you an idea if you're kind of looking at this for the first time. Uh, different than you know in the past, you had to kind of look at each test release window, and now they're kind of looking at it at quarters. It's interesting to see if that's going to change in the future, or is it going to stay as the quarter? So we'll, we'll, we'll find out as we move through that. Okay, next paragraph. So here's another big one, right? Is it anticipated that testing will commence on January 10th? So that's why I'm saying for those that are going into busy season, the 10th to the 15th, big time uh, to try to get into that exam. Uh, because especially if you're taking BEC, uh, that would be great for that to happen while you're in busy season um scores okay are anticipated to only be released once per test section per quarter due to the necessary standard setting analysis and activity so this is the chain i mean this is the new exam um they're going to only have four windows per year uh this is a a pretty pretty big difference especially how you plan because it's going to slow down the amount of times that you can sit for the sections within a year. Uh, basically, they're, they're kind of, you know, now we know based on the previous video that I did on the the possible extension that's going to become, I say possible because it's not yet finalized, right from 18 to 30 months. Uh, this is probably in part of the reason. If they know they're going to slow down the score releases, it slows down the amount of looks you get at the exam, and so that's a, a problem. So uh, it definitely, this is a, definitely a slowdown here uh, than what we're used to. Okay, so due to the limited, and they, and they, oh, okay, so this is actually I thought was um, uh, probably red alert, red alert. The most uh, interesting part of everything that we're going to talk about is the <laughs> board of accountancy. Uh, considering credit extension, right? Everybody loves those words and other relief. So let's go on to what that is. All right. So the most important paragraph or the most important is, is really up in this area right here. Okay. So due to the limited testing schedule, and once again, we don't know if this is going to be forever or if this is going to be just the first year because of implementation. Uh, but at the end of the day, the first uh, due to the limited testing schedule, right? NASBA has recommended or have recommended a policy uh, to the boards of accountancy for consideration, which would allow candidates with CPA exam credits, okay, um, excuse me, that were like with CPA credits on January 1, 20, to have such credits extended, okay, through um, June 30th. 2025 so um, look at the dates that's a huge extension okay so i mean i'm gonna uh, if you're gonna go back and read this on your own uh you got to see if you fall into that category uh and in, in getting the so that's probably the most important thing on the paper and once again for planning uh but you once again it's going to be uh this was recommended 
okay so as we went over before you got to go into uh, your each state and the, the next paragraph actually does a good job each and I'm gonna just read it word for word because it is that important each board of accountancy must individually consider if it wishes to adopt such a policy NASBA has published the map and so when you go onto the blog and you kinda click on that I put the link in the descriptions below um, if you look on the and see if your state is included right which will be updated by you know as boards consider the policy to date okay so I mean huh, a lot of states have accepted it 39 as of the time that this video is published have already approved the policy so <coughs> excuse me the extension is there for 39 of the 50 states um, so others will be reviewing it and adopting it in upcoming board meetings in some states the more the board may be favorably inclined to adopt the policy but legislative rulemaking may be required which could take some time so once again they give you a little bit of a benefit they tell you that the adoption and then they kind of take it back a little bit or kind of uh, protect themselves because right um, the, some of those states that are not or have issues with the approval uh, might not be they don't want to give the impression that all 50 are going to be out of the gate uh, some of them are going to be delayed but it's interesting as we get closer to the January 1st 2024 date you're gonna have to know uh, do I have credit or not so uh, they're gonna have to jump on that so it's gonna be interesting to see how that goes and um, we'll, we'll kind of take it you know from there but um, you know I think the other kind of uh, the last paragraph on the on this uh, wonderful uh, credit extension and other relief is we'll also be asked to consider a rule change that is currently under expo uh, under exposure for for comment it is anticipated that the model rule right could be available right by early in the final form by early 2023 i mean huh, i'm not sure how early it could be if we're already in the middle of 2023 but such a rule if adopted okay uh by a board would shift the start date of the 18 month credit window so this was interesting when i read this on my own that the date that the score that you get the credit which typically um, started when you sat for the exam or when you tested for the exam they want to switch that to start the score of the 18 month window um, when you actually get the passing score which makes sense right I mean it's not really fair that if they're gonna take longer to get you back to score you're kind of sitting in limbo for you know if if you're in November I mean it's 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 a huge swing so you, you kind of have to be uh, they're definitely trying to do the right things and extending the period and so uh, the 18 months so when that 18 month has always been a uh, I get that question all the time uh, for most states at least was always when you sat doesn't matter when you get the score uh, and when the score was coming back pretty uh, pretty rapidly it didn't matter uh, but now right if they're redu if they're giving that score uh, they're taking longer for whatever the reason I understand they have to implement the new 2024 exam but the longer it takes then you're really at a disadvantage if you're sitting there waiting because as you all know the, the number one question that I get is do I continue to study for the exam that I'm waiting for the score on or do I move on to the next and and usually as my candidates know we always ask are you in busy season coming or busy season going right I mean if, you, if, if you're going into busy season maybe we kind of take a, um, a, a soft approach and 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 continue studying for the stuff that you're working on while you're waiting for the score release but the score release is usually so rapid that it really wasn't an issue in this this used to happen uh, maybe like 10 15 years you know 10 years ago almost when when the um, the windows were uh, longer like they're going back to now at least for this for this 2024 year so now the planning becomes huge because you, you don't know if you're going to be able to are you wasting time for studying for an exam that you already passed uh, very interesting questions here. So um, I think, you know, uh, it's definitely going to be something that's going to be um, fun to see how they handle. And, and then finally, uh, they give you kind of like a transition policy reminder. I'll leave, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of paragraphs here, but this is all on their website. You know, take a look, uh, see for yourself how it, imp you know, how it impacts you because uh, it's important stuff, be, you know, especially for planning. So uh, happy exam planning, and I'll talk to you soon. Be well.